Hi there. When we went to Okinawa for the first time in 1973, um, quite a few people helped us there. Um, right, right off the boat as we arrived, we were met by um, one of the uh, chaps from the Jundo camp, uh, Mr. Chinnan, not Tero Chinnan, who uh, was an instructor in the United States. Um, and he took us uh, to the dojo. And um, one of the questions we asked him was, because there was a lot of foreigners on the boat, particularly a lot of Americans, and he came right over to us. And we said, how did you know it was us? And he, he just said, I, I looked at your hands, I looked at your knuckles. And uh, the assumption was anybody who was um, coming over to uh, the Karate Dojo would have um, conditioned hands, which we did from training at Yogi. Then um, some, of the, some of the Okinawan instructors were very, very helpful, but there was one English chap who was resident there and who was training at Jundo Camp, uh, Mark Bishop, a very laid back character. Uh, he, he was married to uh, an Okinawan girl and um, uh, was uh, deeply into Okinawan culture. And he um, showed us around quite a bit and he said, um, you know, you're doing a lot of martial arts stuff let's go to the beach and he took us to the beach uh, and we had a very pleasant day um, and uh, we really enjoyed his company and um, anyway some years later he wrote a book which is the book we're talking about uh, uh, in this review on Okinawan uh, Karate and um, he, he goes into the history, talks about all the different systems and that, but he brings it, brings it pretty much up to date. So in a way you could say it kind of complements uh, Richard Kim's book, which was in the more ancient history or older history. And Mark's book, although it does cover that, also is some of the more modern schools and masters as well. Uh, by the time he'd written the book, uh, I believe he'd, stopped training in uh, Goju and he was doing other systems and one of the comments he makes in the book is the um, Sanchin Kata which is uh, central to Goju. Uh, he, he says um, a lot of people from other systems looked rather askance at it and it was um, noted for being um, causing high blood pressure. Uh, now, objectively, if you, if, you, if you look at the whole study uh, or practice of Sanchin, um, I, I would wonder at the func functionality of it. I, I know the experts praise it and um, insist on its um, usefulness and its um, being essential. Um, but having done it for a long time, um, I don't really know what benefits it brings, except that if you're training in an art, doing the things in that art are, are what it's all about. Um, and if there are um, negative health implications, then that, that, that's a factor to consider as well. Uh, so I, I found that interesting in his book, that, that comment. Um, taking Okinawan uh, karate in general, um, I don't think really it had any um, real deep secrets. I, I, I think it was rather a simple um, system. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of people are looking for deeper meanings and so on, and I don't think it's there in the Okinawan systems. Um, and I'll give you an example. There was a, one of the senior instructors, another uh, chap who helped us a lot, Ted Yasuda. Um, and he worked on one of the American bases and he, he spoke pretty good English. 
and he, he kind of was u usually the point of contact. Um, he, he, I think he was a sixth down at the time. And one day he said to me, he took me into his office and he said, um, I'm going to, sh uh, he said, I found some very, very important things about breathing techniques and uh, I, I, I'm going to show you the material. So I thought, oh, he's going to dig out some ancient scroll um, from China or something like that. And he dug in his uh, bookshelf and came up with Teach Yourself Yoga, the English book with the yellow cover, which was half a crown at the time and w w was just very, very simple stuff. Even, even in yoga, it was simple stuff. And I was taken aback. And um, Goju, which has got a lot of specialized breathing techniques in the kata and so on, and here, here uh, I'm being shown a book on um, teach yourself yoga. So that that was a, a point. Um, and another thing uh, about the training in general uh, at Jundokan and in I think the other Goju uh, dojo in in Okinawa, um, the main training was what was called free practice, where as you went in and you just did your own thing. You warmed up and you, you started doing your basics or whatever you want to do, kata or whatever you wanted to do. And at some point, somebody who was senior to you would uh, come over to you and would tell you to do something. Put you through a kata or take you on makawara or something like that. Give you a bit of instruction and then leave you. And probably he would then be gripped by somebody senior to him and put through something as well. And that was the system. It was very informal and um, not really conducive to um, focused progressive training, I would say. I, I did pick up one really good drill. One, one uh, guy who was senior to me, I don't even know his name, um, beckoned me, took me over to the Makawara and we stood out of the side and we had to throw hook punches at it and after we you know in taking in turn he he struck i struck he struck i struck and after we'd done it about 10 or so uh, he didn't speak english and he um through sign language and, and so on he made it clear no 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 i've got to go as fast and as hard as him i had to match him and um I took it away as a really good uh, exercise, and we we do it on uh, on the um, the bag. We do it as an elbow drill on the bag, still in combatives. Then another thing I would mention is uh, on my second visit to Okinawa, where we went with um, a group from uh, Yoyogi from the dojo, Higawana Sensei's dojo, and we were going over there specifically to uh, there was a big uh, Goju get together to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the death of the founder Chojin Miyagi and uh, so we're in Jundokan we've been there for a while and we, we've been training quite regularly uh, Mark was there Mark Bishop he wasn't he, he was still resident there and uh, he on the sense he decided to take the yogi guys and take us also one end of the dojo and we did a yogi session which was hard it's a gruel and particularly in okinawa which was very hot and this was in october it was hot and uh, after we finished mark, mark bishop came over to me and he said i couldn't train like that he, he said that that was just too severe so that illustrated the difference it was kind of the level of the training in okinawa and the way we trained on the Higuana Sensei. And when we went to the Joju Miyagi Memorial, I saw all the top Goju people. They were all there. Every senior master was there, some from Japan as well. And I can say quite categorically that the best practitioner of Goju was Higuana Sensei. He, he, he was hand head and shoulders above everyone else. He wouldn't say that, he wouldn't allow it to be said about himself at the time because he, he revered these guys, but he, without a doubt he was the best. I did see people from other systems as well and I still rate 
uh, Higg One Sense is the top um, practitioner of Okinawan karate in the whole as a whole. So the book, um, I recommend it if you're interested in um, the history, particularly and uh, all the different aspects there. Um, written by a guy who was a, a really good guy, very helpful to, to us, and also is um, is really, really, um, he loves Okinawa and its culture.